Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Cornell Wilde in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents a true story with only names changed about a man who inadvertently became involved in a murder plot. Our story, Alan in Wonderland. Our star, Mr. Cornell Wilde. Say, Harlow, our team looks great out there. Ah, oh, you bet, Hap. And it's their teamwork that counts. Oh, by the way, that's why you can count on the Autolite electrical system in your Autolite-equipped car. Every unit and component part is related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give you the finest teamwork and the smoothest performance money can buy. We were talking about the game, Harlow. And that Autolite electrical system is game as they come, Hap. It includes the starting motor, distributor, generator, battery, coil, wire, spark plugs, and all the other parts of the complete Autolite electrical system installed as original equipment on so many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. Top performers, eh, Harlow? Ah, you can be sure of that, Hap. So, friends, insist on Autolite original factory parts for your Autolite-equipped car. Be sure of top performance. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents Alan in Wonderland, a true story starring Mr. Cornell Wilde, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. To Judge Gordon Hall, Jr., Judge of the Superior Court, Office 62, County Building, Greenville, South Carolina. Your Honor... As attorney for the plaintiff in the case now before you, I fully realize my absence from court this morning ipso facto places me in contempt. However, due to the fact that I almost had my throat cut, I hope the court will accept this explanation, but we'll keep it in the strictest confidence. When your honor adjourned court last Wednesday... I left by train for New York, planning to spend the weekend with friends, return on the 3.50 Sunday afternoon. My stay was pleasantly uneventful until approximately train time, when due to extremely heavy traffic, I arrived at the station later than expected. I missed by about five seconds. The next train wasn't until 11.50. I looked at the station clock to see how much time I had to kill. Took out my wallet to see what I could afford in the way of killing time. Almost immediately, I was aware of a rather attractive young lady coming directly toward me. I told you butter wouldn't suit the works. Now, if the court is familiar with Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, your honor may recall, as I did, that this is a line from the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. Feeling certain that the lady was uh, inebriated, I gave her the Marge Hare's classic reply. It was the best butter. All right, now listen. Seven o'clock sharp. Be at 624 West 15. You'll get your money and instructions there. Make sure you're not followed. Understand? Oh, yes, ma'am. No buts. And you were five minutes early. You know that's dangerous. Oh, now look, honey. Next time, you better be on time. Obviously, I had received information of importance to someone. Now, thinking it over, I got a strong feeling it was something unlawful. The next thing was to make sure. I wrote down the address on the back of an envelope and moved a few yards away from where I'd been standing, just under the station clock. At exactly four o'clock, a man in a dark suit took up my exact same position. He glanced at the clock, took out his wallet, started to count his money. I walked toward him casually... I told you butter wouldn't suit the works. It was the best butter. Get out of town fast. They're wise to us. Wise to us, but... No buts. The boss says get out of town. Apparently, my choice of words was effective because the man immediately followed my instructions with amazing speed and professional finesse. If I had any doubts, the crime was in the making. They were now completely erased. Consequently, I reported my evidence to the police. (laughs) 
certainly an interesting story, Mr. Stone, but... Uh... You don't believe me, Lieutenant? I didn't say that. But that's what you mean, isn't it? What I mean is there's no law against quoting Alice in Wonderland in Pennsylvania Station or anywhere else for that matter. You're a lawyer, you ought to know that. Well, all right, sure, but they were using it as a code, isn't that plain? Well, you'd like to know why. Well, it's not just a question of curiosity, Lieutenant. Look, I... Mr. Stone, New York is a city of over eight and one half million. A certain percentage are screwballs. No, this wasn't a screwball. These people were deadly serious. They're up to something, Lieutenant, I assure you. I've got to have something to go on, Mr. Stone. Even if we could find these people, what do I charge them with? I've got to have something concrete. Well, now, the, the address on 15th Street. Can't you investigate it? Okay. All right, wait a minute. Healy? Yeah, Lieutenant. You want me? Yeah, Healy. This is uh, Mr. Stone. I want you to drive him to an address on 15th Street. He'll explain all about it on the way. Of course, I couldn't blame the lieutenant for being skeptical. It sounded crazy telling it that way, but it was the truth, and I couldn't help resenting his attitude, as if I'd dreamed up the whole thing, merely to get myself a ride in a squad car. As we drove downtown, I recounted the events to Officer Healy, who fortunately showed serious interest. He explained that this part of New York was not known as a crime center, which further increased my belief that I had stumbled onto no ordinary criminal undertaking. The traffic thinned as we approached the neighborhood of 15th Street. Everything looked ordinary enough, a typical Sunday afternoon street scene. Children to play, stolen couples in their Sunday best, baby carriages, a drugstore open on the corner, and a blind man selling pencils. What was that number again, Mr. Stone? 624 West. Now, that'll be the north side. Now, let's see. 618, 620, 622. That's funny. What? What's funny? Well, they're tearing down the building. That's 624. Got to be. It can be. You sure 624 is the number? I'm positive. I wrote it down right away. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but let's go over and check. Hey. Hey, you. Yeah? What do you want? Come here a minute. Keep your eyes open, Mr. Stone. Let me know if you see anybody you recognize. All right. What's the matter, officer? Something wrong? Want some information. Who's the boss of this job? Me. Me, I'm the boss. What's the trouble? What's the number here? What? We want to know the number of this building. What? Oh. Oh, this was uh, 624. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. 624. I'm tearing down the right building. Don't think I'd make a mistake like that, do you? How long have you been working here? Two weeks. Going to tear down the ones on both sides, too. I know what I'm doing. You want to see the papers? We believe you. How come you're working on Sunday? Rush job. Anything wrong with that? I guess not. Why are you tearing the, the buildings down? To clear the lot. You kidding? What are you guys looking for? It's all right. Forget it. You're welcome to watch, but I got to get back to work. Okay, that's all. Thanks. See anything, Mr. Stone? No. No, nothing at all. That all looked legit to me, too. Uh, I guess the lieutenant was right. I got all hopped up over nothing. Well, that's the way it goes sometimes. Can't get over it. I was so sure from... Oh, you did right anyway. Take it from me. I feel kind of foolish now, but... <laughs> Don't feel that way. You had cause. Ah, uh, well, let's just forget the whole thing. I'm sorry I troubled you. Oh, no trouble at all. That's what we're here for. Where would you like me to drop you off? Well, my train doesn't leave till 11.50. Or... Well, you got plenty of time. Aren't you taking a movie or something? Yeah, I might as well, I guess. Uh, just drop me off around Times Square, please. Sure thing. Next time you're up from Greenville, drop in and see us again. Officer Healy dropped me at one of the Broadway theaters. I bought a ticket and went in. There had to be something to it. Somewhere along the line, I'd made a mistake. I took out the envelope on which I had written the address. By the light of the screen, I reread it again. No, the mistake wasn't there. Then my mind went back over the Matt Hatter's tea party. No, there was nothing there. I... 
Then it suddenly hit me. The girl had said to be at 624 West 15th Street at 7 o'clock. Nothing about being inside. That was it. It had to be. I glanced at my watch. It was just 641 when I left the theater. Taxi! Hey, taxi! Six twenty-four, West Fifteenth, and step on it. It was exactly three minutes to seven when I reached the corner of West Fifteenth. The street was deserted now. I walked slowly toward all that was left of Six Twenty-four. I could see no one, but I was certain I was being watched. I reached the front of the building and stopped. It was exactly seven o'clock. The sound came from the opposite end of the street. Fortunately, whoever it was would have to pass under the only street light. When he reached the cone of light, I saw a man, well-dressed, wearing dark glasses, feeling his way toward me with a cane. It didn't look real. Seven maids? Seven mops? Good. Follow me. And I remembered the rest of it from Alice in Wonderland. If seven maids with seven mops swept for half a year, you suppose the walrus said that they could get it clear? I doubt it, said the carpenter, and shed a bitter tear. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Cornell Wilde in Alan in Wonderland. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Well, Harlow, we won. And happy. You always win with an Autolite electrical system. That's why it's used as original equipment on so many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. Yes, sir. The boys really went all out today. And so does your Autolite electrical system, Hap. It goes to work the instant you start the ignition and keeps on working every second your engine runs. As well as when you sound your horn, play your radio, turn on your lights, use your electric windshield wiper or lighter. That electrical system is mighty important to every car owner, eh, Harlow? Right you are, Hap. So, friends... Treat your car's electrical system to a periodic checkup at your car dealers or at your nearest authorized Autolite service station. You can easily locate your nearest authorized Autolite service station in the classified section of your phone book under Automobile Electrical Service. Or call Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. You'll find it pays. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now... Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Cornell Wilde in Elliot Lewis's production of Alan in Wonderland. A true story, well calculated to keep you in suspense. The blind man led me east along 15th Street. To assure myself, I passed my hand in front of his face. Uh, He was blind, all right, if that was any comfort. I had no choice except to follow him, but I still couldn't help wishing there'd been time to phone the police. You were right on time. That's what we like. Yeah, sure. Business is business, ain't it? Exactly, young man, exactly. Uh, the the dame told me I'd get my money here, that right? As agreed. One thousand before, two thousand after. If all goes well. We were informed you're the best. The best? Why, sure. What else? You pay for something. You should get the best. Uh, Wait a minute. Is there anyone watching? I I don't see anybody. It's too dark. Oh, good. Then we go in here, the cellar. Now, my key. Uh, Follow me. I, I can't see anything. Don't worry. I'll be your eyes. Uh, 
I held on to the blind man's arm as he led the way down a narrow corridor. It was black as pitch. As he walked, my nostrils filled with countless smells, all musty and old. The corridor made a turn, and up ahead a faint light appeared. As we approached, I could see the outline of a door. We stopped in front of it, and the blind man knocked. Sudden light from the naked bulb was blinding. As my eyes adjusted, a, a row of iron sinks came into view along one wall. The room evidently had been the building's laundry. Casually shifting my gaze, I observed three men. One was big, all over hair like a gorilla. The second was small, rat-faced. The blind man went over to the third. Obviously the boss, whose strange glowing eyes studied me carefully from behind a battered table. He doesn't look what I expected. What did you expect? A countryman. He doesn't look like a countryman. What difference does it make? They guaranteed he could do the job. They promised me a countryman. They told us we'd have to take what they sent. Mm. Sure he's the one. No mistake. Positive. The appointed place, the appointed time, the password. Even a blind man could see. Ah. <laughs> Let us get on with it, Alex. Give him the instructions. All right, all right. You... Huh? Yeah? Listen carefully. It is now 7.05. They will leave their hotel at 7.30, and they are very punctual. This is Nicholas. Nicholas. Uh. Nicholas will be your driver. My driver? You will sit in front with him. Did you bring a weapon? Well, no, I... Good. I... Extremely clever of you. In case you were caught coming here, we have a weapon for you in the car. Carlo. Yes, a beautiful mechanism. Accurate. You will enjoy using it. Carlo will be sitting directly behind you in case anything goes wrong. Understand? Oh, yeah, sure. Just as you say. They will probably come out together. Pray for it. If luck does not smile and Santusian comes out alone, let him go. Being only foreign minister, he is less important. Yeah, I, I understand. It is the premier, Massini, that we want. I... Yeah, of course. You must get Massini. If he comes out first, empty your gun in him and forget Santusian. If they come out together, kill them both. Kill. I was being hired to kill. Massini, premier of one of the Balkan republics, and Santusian, the foreign minister. Their pictures have been in the papers constantly since they'd arrived for an important UN meeting. Their deaths in the United States were to throw the Balkans into an uproar, and I was to be the assassin. It seemed like part of some terrible nightmare. No one knew where I was. If I gave myself away, they'd kill me on the spot. I was in it alone, up to my neck. I needed help. I had to think of something, stall, anything. You listening? Uh, yeah, sure I'm listening. Your car will develop engine trouble directly in front of the Park Avenue entrance. This will give you a clear line of fire. We were given to understand you never miss. No, oh, that's right. I, I never miss. Nicholas will be outside the car pretending to examine the engine. You will be alone in the front seat. The moment will be yours. You know, then there, there's nothing to worry about, is there? Just one thing more. If you fail us, lose your nerve, or decide to change your mind once the plan is in motion... Carlo has orders to kill you instantly. I will be right behind you. Well, okay, sure. You guys got a right to protect your investment. All right. It is now 7.10. He will leave in five minutes. Nicholas, we finish card game, huh? Yeah. Hey. Huh? What? What is it? Uh... My money. Yeah, what about my dough? I, uh, I have it right here. One thousand. Oh, yeah, thanks. Play, Nicholas. A <clears throat> uh, uh, cigarette, young man? Huh? No, 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 no thanks. I, uh, seem to sense a nervousness about you. A nervous one? 
No, I, I just want to get my hands on that rod. So... <laughs> of course you do. That's the spirit. All right. It's 7.15. Wait, now, wait a minute. What? The the rest of the money. What about the other two grand? Carlo has it with him. You will get it the moment you complete the job. All set? Now, wait. Now, let's see if Carlo's got it. I have it. It is getting late. We have to... I want to see it. I have it. Come on, come on. Show it to him. But, Alex... Show it. There. Satisfied? Yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied. All set. Now, go. And may luck be with you. Good hunting, young man. Good hunting. We left. Carlo leading now and Nicholas right behind me. I could only sense that we were headed for the back of the building this time. But even if I'd been able to see in that inky black, the narrow corridor offered no chance of escape. Stairs now. I tried to make myself think of something, but I, I couldn't. Only that I was dreaming it all like Alice, and pretty soon I'd wake up. We came out of the back of the building into a deserted alley. The big ape was still behind me, and Carlo in front. He led the way to a large black car. You ride in front with Nicholas. Uh, it is now 7.19. All right, Nicholas. Hey, uh, Carlo. Huh? Uh, the, the gun. Let's have it. You will have it in plenty of time. Well, I feel funny without one. If anything goes wrong before... Nothing will go wrong. Nicholas is an excellent driver, and the plan is perfect. Perfect. The gun. He's too quick for Massini. If it had been left to me, it would have been a knife. <laughs> Pay attention to the traffic, Nicholas. We turned uptown, and the traffic began to get heavier. I looked at my watch. It was 7.23. I thought about jumping Nicholas, wrecking the car. But not with Carlo in the back seat. I could feel his little rat's eyes burning into the back of my neck. Any sudden move, he'd be right on top of me. My only chance was a policeman, a squad car, someone I could signal. 7.25. One more block. You better give me that gun. In time. We are here, Nicholas. Perfect. Uh, 727. Get out and look at the engine, Nicholas. Hey, Carlo. Pay attention to me. Look across at the entrance to the hotel. They will come out the left-hand door. The doorman will signal for their official car. It is right back there, you see? They will step to the curb before the car arrives. That is when you fire. Okay, now give me the gun. First, the knife. Knife? At the side of your neck, you feel it? Hey. Insurance for a good job. Sharp as a razor, my friend. Here is the gun. Hair trigger. Careful, you know. Hey, that, that knife, you, you don't want me to miss, do you? You will not miss. It is your business not to miss. Now keep your eye on the door. I could feel the point of that knife just barely scratch the back of my neck. I looked across at the hotel. It was 7.29. Everything was normal. People passed, the doorman nodded and smiled, but no one looked our way. I felt the gun go slippery as my hand began to sweat. They, they wouldn't come out. They just couldn't. They'd go out another door. The meeting was canceled. They'd see us. Knew I had a gun. Nothing to worry about. They weren't coming out. 7.30. There. There they come. Both of them. Hey, move the knife, will you? They're walking to the curb. Take aim. Move the knife. Take aim. I, I am. No. Shoot. Shoot straight. Shoot. Pull the trigger. Shoot. Oh, it, it, it all 
all happened at once. It all happened at once. Just relax. Uh, You're all right. Uh, what? what? You've been under a sedative. A nurse. Hospital. My, my throat. Oh, you're going to be all right. The doctor even said you could have visitors. You can what? come in now. No, no, you mustn't let them in. Well, Mr. Stone, how are you feeling? Huh? Why, you are... I feel fine, Lieutenant. My head's buzzing a little. It should. You got a pretty nasty bump. Doctor says you get over it. You're a lucky guy. What happened? What hit me? I did. When I saw you aim the gun, I didn't know what you'd do. There wasn't time, so I just ran the squad car into the one you were in, trying to spoil your aim. You, you were around all the time? Mm-hmm. The big one's dead. They uh, don't hold out much chance for the other one, either. What did I... I, I did kill them. Oh, no. No, I mean the guys you were with. Oh. We had a tail on you every minute after you left the precinct. He went to the movies, six of us. And the, the blind man, Lieutenant, what about him? I picked him and that other character up right after you walked out. Got the girl, too. Yeah, well, that's fine. Just one more thing. None of this is going to be made public. It might create some sort of incident. I'm sorry, but that goes for you, too. Oh, of course. I, I understand. Sorry. Time's up. Oh, so long, Mr. Stone. Long. If I need a good lawyer, I'll look you up. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Cornell Wilde. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as well as are the 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, Halloween weekend, a new radio dramatization of one of the most famous suspense stories ever written, Mary Godwin Shelley's Frankenstein. Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. The program will be heard on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music written by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Alan in Wonderland was adapted for suspense by Richard Chandley from the true story by Kurt Singer. Featured in tonight's cast were Joseph Kearns, Truda Marson, Larry Thor, Charles Calvert, Clayton Post, Edgar Barrier, and Jack Crucian. Cornell Wilde may soon be seen in the Warner Brothers picture, Operation Secret. And remember next week on Suspense, Mr. Herbert Marshall in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. You can buy Autolite electrical parts, Autolite stay-full batteries, Autolite resistor or standard type spark plugs at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is the CBS Radio Network.